AI, it's a hot topic, especially in the Airbnb world. Is there something out there that can truly automate all communication with your guests? Well, Ben Pekarski is going to tell us right now here on the Fearless Investor Podcast. Hey guys, welcome into the Fearless Investor Podcast. You're listening to me, Kyle Stanley, and I'm excited to talk to you about something that a lot of people have been talking about recently, which is AI. And Ben Pekarski, when he reached out, uh, told me about how he was using AI to automate all communication, all communication, not just a little bit, but all of it through his 12 Airbnb listings. Now, I asked him, well, it, 12, you know, can, can you do that with 50? He said, yeah, it's, it's the exact same thing and the exact same process. Doesn't matter if it's one or 50. The important thing is to know that he was able to reduce his cost. Listen to this, $300 per month per property with a VA down to $14 per month per property with AI. Literally $286 per property that he was able to reduce his cost. I mean, think about that. Translate that to your business. How much can you save if you do that? Well, Ben is going to talk to us about exactly how he was able to do that. Now, unfortunately, a little, little spoiler alert here. Unfortunately, the company that he was using did actually shut down because Airbnb made some changes. And now this company was no longer able to provide the type of uh, guest experience, client experience that they were before. That that company, that product was called Guest.Guru, which I had heard a lot about. Uh, and now he's looking for the next one. So if you're listening to this now, don't listen to the company. Don't think like, hey, I'm going to go out and do this right now. Listen to the concept. Just get, for me, it was getting past mental mind blocks on what AI truly can do. I thought it was too good to be true. But everything that Ben has told me and really shared in this podcast was able to help me get past some of my mental mind blocks. So when that next thing does come out, maybe it's guest.guru version two, right? Then I'll, we'll, you know, me and you, we can be ready to go out and take that concept and apply it to our business. So get ready, go ahead and listen here right now with Ben Bukarski. And then when he does find that next company that does provide this solution, I'll go ahead and drop it in the comments on the YouTube video so that you can see and try it out yourself. Hey guys, welcome into the Fearless Investor Podcast, and we have Ven Pekarski on here today. Ven, the tatted investor, as he is called on Instagram, um, is killing it in the AI space and has so much value to provide for us today. Um, coming out of Syracuse, New York, uh, I'm excited to have you on here today, Ven. So say what's up to everyone. Thank you very much. What's up, everybody? Appreciate being here. Awesome. Okay, Ven. So, uh, Craziest Airbnb story. Let's start there. I know you've got a few for us here. I'm <laughs> sure even being in New York, you probably got some crazies. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Uh, um, ironically, it was my very first property. Well, I would say ironically, but I learned a lot from this one. I had a 1,300 person party. I'm sorry, a 300 person party in a 1,300 square foot house. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> how does that even how Massive. Does 300 yes. people fit into a 1,300 square foot home? That is the question uh, to uh, figure out, honestly. Cops are called. <laughs> they showed up. They didn't even do anything. They just let the party continue because there's just too many people. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Are you yep. serious? But it Thanks, worked to my favor. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, well, hey, and you're still hosting today, still killing it. And uh, oh, yeah. I, I want people to, to get a lay of the land before we get into the AI conversation of your business and especially, you know, um, just the the brand that you have, uh, you and I were kind of talking about it off off camera a little bit, but um, I want to give you a, a chance to talk about that right now. So, it, what was Ven doing before Airbnb and short term rentals, and um, and really kind of talk about your brand, the Tatted Investor, here for a second too. Yeah, uh, before real estate took place, uh, I was and still am a professional tattoo artist. I've been doing that for about the past seven to eight years, and when COVID hit, it really uh, opened my eyes to the reality is that I can't make money unless I'm physically working with somebody in person. Um, mm -hmm. I learned real quick how to build a business from my laptop. And I had to figure out how to do that out of the state of New York because we're an attorney state and it makes it that much more complicated to close in a timely manner. So I was just mm -hmm. funneled and forced into figuring this out because I wasn't making any money. I had the family support. Got it. Yeah. And, and so um, when when you decided to to look at 
doing real estate, what was it about real estate and Airbnb that made you say like, Hey, this is, this is the route since I'm not going to be, uh, since I can't really see people for the, the tattoo business. Mm -hmm. Uh, so initially I started in wholesaling. That's what I learned from learned about and kind of gravitated towards out of the gate due to TikTok. TikTok just opened my eyes to that world. Nice. Um, I found a lady that was very nice and was genuine and authentic. wasn't trying to sell me. And it opened my eyes to actual investing and how to generate money and income through real estate. After a period of time of trying to wholesale, I found out it wasn't my cup of tea. I mm -hmm. gravitated more towards the short-term rentals because of my background in the hospitality side of tattooing, customer engagement, learning what they like, selling that kind of product to them. And it just clicked with me. And so that's kind of where I started that journey and a fruition from that point forward. Awesome. So, and I'm just curious because wholesaling is not my cup of tea mm -hmm. either, but what was it about wholesaling that you mm -hmm. didn't like? I couldn't grasp it mentally. The concept, I'd try everything that I like read under the sun. Um, it was just extremely active business. It, you just constantly had to be on the go. You had to make a conveyor belt, pulling leads, calling them, dispositioning the property, transactional coordination. It was a lot. And I yeah. just if you couldn't ever piece it together. Yeah. If you don't build a huge business with that, with tons of people, then you're just never going to make that passive. So totally agree. Um, mm -mm. So when, when you said Airbnb, what was the first step? Did you buy a property? Mm -hmm. Did you arbitrage? Did you coast? Cause you have right. I think you told me 12 properties right now, uh, three, you yep. own three, you arbitrage and then six, you co-host. Uh, is that, is that right? Yep. Okay. That's so where right. did you yep. start? Started with arbitrage, actually. Mm. Uh, went on a deep dive within YouTube University, found Sean Rachichich, and it just made the most sense on the smallest amount of money to invest to start your first therapy and get it up and running. Uh, the math added up, and I started cold calling. Since I had a background in wholesale cold calling, it was that much easier for me to have a conversation and talk to a landlord because it was colleague to colleague mentality. I wasn't selling yeah. them on something. I was helping provide value to the property that already exists for them, guaranteeing them a paycheck. And that's all I had to convey. And yeah, a lot of different than a wholesale conversation. <laughs> yeah, very, very different. <laughs> Did you find it be a lot easier? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. The conversion rate was significantly improved. Why, why do you think that is? It, just for people who are listening right now that maybe have tried wholesaling and, and they're like, I don't want to do cold calling because mm -hmm. I've been down that route and you know I would have to call 300 people <clears throat> to get one deal. Uh, why do you think this was an easier conversation yeah. for arbitrage? Because we're leading with value out of the gate. We are automatically mm. going to this landlord with the intention of making them profitable. We're going to them saying, hey, I'm going to become what you need me to become and then add a cherry on top by making your property better than it was originally, or at least the same condition as when I first moved into it. I'm mm. keeping it at for sale condition at all times for you. Professionally managed, professionally clean, professionally growth. What do you have to lose? And if you portray that, they gravitate fairly easily in comparison. Yep. Awesome. Cool. Um, question and i'm gonna use your words not mine mm -hmm. uh when we first met we were dming on instagram and and you were talking about you know uh the fact that you have a lot of tattoos and mm -hmm. trying to jump into this business and not be uh you know a book judged by its cover um was that difficult for you when you were cold calling and meeting with these landlords um how did you break that barrier if, if it was difficult Calling was easy because they can't see me through the phone. Mm -hmm. So I never had any fear of them rejecting me just on appearance alone. Uh, the first time I went and talked to the landlord on my first property, I was, I was very nervous. I didn't know how he would handle that, but I was banking on the value and the confidence that I provided and the credibility I provided over the phones with him and the rapport I already built. So when I arrived and we walked the property, I just continued that confidence in conversation on a professional level. Uh, I carried my tattoo experience and my customer base experience through that as well. And I was able to just push it forward and people respect that when you, you talk value and provide confident numbers and show what you can do for these people, people see green. They don't see anything else. <laughs> mm. So the biggest thing I'm hearing is confidence. Yes. Yep. Yeah. It really okay. is. Cause you know, one of the things I can say is a lot of people, they jump into this business and whether they are, 
you know, uh, a college student or they have no business experience, they didn't go to college or they didn't go uh, to business school and they come in with all of these, let's call them imposter syndrome type of things, right? And and they almost kill their confidence before ever doing a deal. Um, I mean, to me, you're, you're in a situation that like, if, if, if you convey the value, right. And then you show up and and Mm -hmm. people see you and, and get like stunned, right. Like to me, that's even more of a barrier than the people that I just mentioned. So like, what, what do you say to those kinds of people? Um, just that might be listening right now that ha- that don't have that confidence. How, how did, were you able to um, give yourself the confidence to be able to, to get past, you know, these preconceived notions potentially from, from your clients? Um, honestly, living by the example that you just created, I don't have a college degree. I dropped out of college mm-hmm. after I got nine credits. I don't have any background in business. I bootstrapped this from the ground up um, for the past eight years in tattooing and now real estate. Um, I just really started to understand that the more no's you get, the faster you get to your yes. And even though I can't calculate that conversion rate, it will happen no matter what you do and how you do it. And so if somebody doesn't want to work with me, that means that they're not going to be a good partner, even if they said yes, because that's a bad relationship out of the gate. And I don't want that. I don't need that. I want people that look at me and don't see these. They see the value I provide because this is my brand. This is what makes me stand out. And everybody can do that in their own individual ways. That's good. That's good. And say that again, the more, the more no's you get w- w- one more time on that. The faster you get to your yes. Yeah. Yes. If I, if you could, if I could tell you today, you're going to get 45 no, and the 46 yes is, is going to be the yes. Number 46 is the yes. You're going to call every single person until you hit 45 calls. Cause you know, 46 is the yes. Yeah. Just do it. <laughs> My wife says, go get your nose. That's yes. I, I like, I like the way you said that too, though. Um, awesome. So then, um, you know, you built up this portfolio, um, and mm-hmm. you had VAs and VAs you found to be pretty expensive. Can you just tell me what your experience was with VAs before we jump into AI? Sure. Um, I don't have a ton of experience. One of my biggest issues is as a self-employed tattoo artist, first and foremost, I like to do a lot of the work myself. So delegating that out was a big challenge for me on like training those people out was a big challenge for me. Human to human interaction in that sense. So I put a couple of VAs on to a couple of my properties and I had to train them and constantly correct the mistakes they were making and just kind of watch them and shadow them. And it was, it was tedious and it took a lot of work and not my cup of tea per se. Okay. And what, what was it about the VAs that was not the cup of tea? You said it was the training, it was the reaching out, but like, were they just not grasping it or what, what was the biggest struggle? It was the, it was sense of that they weren't grasping the concept entirely. Um, Mm -hmm. A lot of the VAs that we hire in this industry come from the Philippines and other foreign countries in that sense. So sometimes there is a little bit of a language barrier um, to be had in that scenario. So, I would tell them or instruct them to do certain things or say certain things uh, if certain interactions took place. And a lot of the times the responses they sent out didn't entirely make sense and or line up. It was proper English, but it wasn't formatted correctly, grammatically, you know, so it led to confusion quite often. So it was just the hurdle that I was struggling to figure out and overcome. Okay. And did you know in the back of your mind, like, Hey, I, I might eventually replace these with AI or were you brought, were you turned on to no. AI by someone else? What, what was that transition? I was turned on to AI by an Instagram ad. Okay. <laughs> this one specifically wow. that I utilized. Um, and I just, I've been the power of AI and I played with chat GPT open AI for a little bit and saw what it could do. And it was just massively impressive to me. And then when somebody built, uh, an AI platform that replaced the guest communications aspect, the virtual assistant aspect that I had in my business. I just dived into it. It was hard not to. Yep. <laughs> so, and, and you're talking to someone right now that I'll be completely honest. I've opened chat GPT. I've used it for, especially mm-hmm. like, you know, just asking some of those common questions to help with like brainstorming mm-hmm. things, right? Like, Hey, 
what's um what's the best place to do airbnb and, and it'll typically list out some like top cities right yeah but but you're talking about literally replacing virtual assistants yes we personally in our business we pay four thousand dollars a month for virtual assistants that's a major cost mm -hmm. um yes, i'm having a tough time wrapping my mind around how do i take ai and actually implement that into my business to replace critical thinking people. So help me get past that block. Sure. So the software that I was utilizing, I would plug in uh, the direct link to my booking, my listing page rather for that property. The AI would go through every single aspect of that listing that I typed a key in, a keyword into or a word into the description, the listing locations, the addresses, everything, everything that I had on that, memorize it. And then it would take every past conversation that I've had with a guest that was at that property and or inquired at that property and capture all that data and then save it so that when somebody sent a message, they would go through that data and respond accurately based on what was already provided to it. And then I could also implement key facts such as check-in instructions or where's there's extra linens. And if they have trouble with the Wi-Fi, this is what you do. If the power goes out, here's the breaker box and this is the flip that you have to, you know, Full nine. And wow. it's a little bit of upfront work. It just does its thing after that. You automate it and you can watch it and make sure it's accurate. And if it's not, you can adjust it. That that makes a lot more sense. So literally it's taking information mm -hmm. that you've already given it and it's taking conversations that guests have already had with you. So if a guest, what, maybe two months ago said, hey, the neighbor's dog is barking. Do you have their phone number? And you had responded with, yes, we'll give them yep. a call. It, it would essentially respond with the same thing. Yes, exactly that. Cool. Yep. So there's, there's some quality control though in that too, right? Like, are you going in and checking and make sure that it's responding correctly? Do you have someone on your team that's doing that? Like, I would imagine you, you aren't just saying, okay, I trust this 100%. I'm going to just let it do its thing. You, you, am, am I right on this? Yeah, yeah no, you're right. I'm the one that does all the quality control. On that. Um, there was two stages at the beginning when you get the listing up into this AI platform. SMS mode, which means that anytime somebody messages you, the AI is going to text me the response it wants to send to the guest, and then I approve it or disprove it. And then, okay. then I, if I disprove it, I help it send the correct response, and then it permanently remembers that from that point forward. And if it is approvable, then I'll wow. send it and approve it. And the more accurate it gets is when I go to the second phase, which is auto host. So I have confidence that it's going to respond correctly and then send a message to the guest as needed without any fear. Wow. Yep. Okay. Um, so this, this all sounds, I mean, you know, first of all, before I go into this next question, what were your costs before with VAs and what are your costs <laughs> now for property? Yeah, so I was paying uh, $300 a month with a VA per property that I had listed. I put that $14 per property with a virtual saving, assistant, the AI rather. Sorry. Yeah, literally saving $286. Yeah, yeah, that's yep. wild. Absolutely wild. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, give, give me give me some of the cons. There's got to be some cons about this. There's got did, did your reviews drop? Did you find that you had to get more into your business because now you're the quality control guy? Like, there, give me one con about this. Oh, uh, the one con is it is software and it is AI and everything is updating rapidly. Uh, mm -hmm. I told you before we got on the call, the sad part about this whole thing was this company actually got shut down two days ago because of airbnb's wow. latest update their software wasn't able to keep up with that and or correct for that so i'm currently hunting wow. for the next one out there but it is a proven concept and so it will happen again or there'll be a better version of this coming out if it's not already out and i gotta find it what was the so name of software the, still has limitations what was the name of the the product you were using it was called guest.guru g-u-r-u okay. I, I had heard of that one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. you know, I guess when, when you do find that next one and mm -hmm. that's a, a total bummer, right? Like that's, <laughs> do you, have you had to yeah. go back in and be your own guest messaging or did you hire I have, again? Like, but it's helped me. Okay. No, I went back, I took full control and I have to say it's helped me really 
get to a next level of hospitality and how I interact with my guests. I, okay. I, I know them more. I, I understand their avatar better because of this. Do you think Airbnb yeah. made these changes knowing that it would eliminate this kind of AI and wanting people to be more like hands on? It's a good question. Uh, there's a good chance that they did do it for that uh, to a degree to that, but I don't have that answer. I'm, I'm curious for sure. Um, a lot of what I'm doing is actually pushing off of Airbnb's platform and going to my own direct booking platform and taking control of my guests and my clientele more so. So, okay. Yeah. Got it. So, all right. If, if this doesn't, you know, if, if you find that, Hey, there's, um, and Eli just commented saying hospitable, just integrated AI in their guest communication. So that's interesting. That might yeah. be something. Everybody guess he has a hospitable host away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so if, if this continues, right? Like you, you find the next one, you said it was guest.guru. Let's say there's guest.guru version two that comes out. Right. Mm -hmm. And it, this continues to happen mm -hmm. where maybe, maybe it's Airbnb, maybe it's not. I mean, at some point, you just say like, Hey, I'm going to stop spinning my wheels and just go back to what was working before and just have my VAs. Or do you think that there's um, a long-term solution to this? You think that Airbnb is eventually going to allow it because of where AI is going in this, this, this world right now. I believe it's 100% going to allow it. 100%. Yeah. We are eight to 10 years into this AI system software already. A lot of people aren't aware of that. A lot of this stuff's been being developed for that amount of time. Um, this is just the break. It's just, it's going to skyrocket. I am fully confident. I wouldn't be surprised if Airbnb within the next year to two years uh, implemented their own AI to help based on all that's taking place. Wow. Okay. So let me once again be kind of a uh, devil's advocate. And the one mm -hmm. thing that I saw when AI came out, as I said, okay, I see a lot of, a lot of jobs being obsolete now that, AI, and you just kind of proved it, right? Yes. Like VAs are now obsolete. Yep. Um, they are becoming obsolete. Yeah. So do you see AI truly being a, a positive thing for not just this industry, but business in general, knowing how many jobs it's going to take away? I do. I, I still support that and still believe that. Um, I look at it in a different frame of mind and the mentality is this is like when the first computer came out and when the first, the internet first became a thing, it mm -hmm. created an entire new world of opportunity that mm -hmm. didn't previously exist. Yes. A lot of things dropped off because of the transition, the evolution. You can't escape that. You can't avoid that. But the opportunity that we have in, at our fingertips right now is just the start. And if you get on now, you're the sky's the limit, literally. Awesome. Yes, it will kill a lot of jobs. It's going to prevent or cause a lot of damage. But the aftermath is going to be that much greater if we stick it out and push through it. So what I'm hearing is just like just like any transition, there's some short term pain. But in the long term, it yep. probably is going to create more opportunities for those same people. Yes. Yep. OK, cool. Um, last question here. How long when, when you got into guest.guru? How long did it take you to get that set up for your 12 properties? Or if it's a per property thing, how long did every property take? Uh, I was honestly able to get everything up and running within two to three days. It, it was not difficult by any means. You literally just took a link and you dropped it into the platform and it went through and cycled through everything. It's going through my previous questions that I had for my VAs to make sure that the guest guru had all that information properly stored into it. And if it didn't, wow. I added it and it just took a little bit of manual labor, but nothing crazy. Okay. Yeah. So the big question is, you know, what's the next platform? You don't know that yet, but, and as we're recording <laughs> this, what I would love is if you DM me and let me know when you do find that next platform, I'll go ahead and add it uh, into okay. the comments on this video. So everyone can know what, what Ven is now looking into as the next solution. <laughs> love it. Does that work? Works perfect. <laughs> okay, awesome. All right, Ven. Um, obviously, this is this is really exciting stuff. Um, it comes with a little bit of a, a waiting game right now for some people. But um, 
tell me just really quickly in, in regards to the world of AI and the world of Airbnb, what, what are the things that you're looking forward to the most that you're in the future going to be implementing into your business? Um, we'll just kind of wrap up with that question. Oh, that's a good question. Um, just the, the simplicity and the automation and organization that comes with all of this. Uh, the more that these AI platforms are being made and the software that's being developed, like the more it happens, everything's just being uh, funneled down into single things. How to be able to put all my organized, like my calendars, my check-in dates, everything, the messaging softwares, the CRM, where I house all my information with my properties, everything into like one platform. It's going to that. And that's what I'm most excited for. Oversimplification. Awesome. awesome. All right. We're, we're in a crazy world right now. So it's, it's exciting to see what's going on. Uh, then how can people connect with you, especially um, if they want to get a few questions answered about AI um, for their business? You can uh, reach out to me at my Instagram page, the tatted investor. Uh, I respond to all DMs on there and you can see all my content and what I'm doing. Awesome. And also and my for those of you that are listening to on my video. Yeah. And, and for those of you that are listening on the podcast and don't see this, uh, Ben also has his phone number here. It's 315-560-9136. Again, five, or 315-560-9136. All right, Vin Pekarski, thank you so much for jumping on here and uh, helping our audience to conquer the world of AI and short-term rentals. You're awesome. Thank you. Okay, so depending on when you're listening to this, jump over to the YouTube video version if you're not watching on YouTube already. Uh, take a look in the comments. I'm going to put that next company that he's using in the comments. If he hasn't found one, then it's not going to be in the comments yet. So just be patient. It might take a few weeks. It might take a few months. Who knows? But either way, when he does find that next one, we're going to be one step closer to having that here for the long run type of company that's going to be able to make it for the long haul. All right, that's going to do it here for the Fearless Investor Podcast. We're helping you to conquer the world of short-term rentals. See you next time.